Bampton has placement holders for the provided legends. This is for easy port identification. This is the positive input for the battery cable and the negative input. This is where the fuse is located, the control cable input. This is your low voltage detection circuit override and your ignition and safety lockout. These are your port identifications for the inputs to control the outputs. To remove the lid, simply turn the thumb screw counterclockwise and lift it straight off. On the left side is your terminal block for switches 1 through 4, positive, negative, positive, negative, so on. On the right hand side is switches 5 through 8. This is your positive battery stud, negative battery stud, 2 amp fuse location, and over here is two input ports for your control cable. This is an input terminal block for all your controllers and for low voltage detection and ignition control. This is your jumper for the negative input and positive input. Input number one on the terminal block is used for the low voltage detection override. It is also used to keep the system alive. Grab a piece of wire, strip it back about an eighth of an inch and loosen up the small set screw using a jeweler screwdriver. Insert the wire into it and then tighten it up to not over tighten it. Next you'll want to connect this side to the positive battery cable side on the Bantam. You could also crimp on a small ring terminal which is a good way to fasten it down. S-Pod carries a jumper that you could use for low voltage bypass. It comes with a ring terminal and a pin terminal to insert into the terminal block. Input number two on the terminal block is for ignition control and safety lockout. Insert a conductor into this terminal, strip it back about an eighth of an inch, tighten it up. What this will allow you to do is lock out switches number one and number two. As long as that input sees a, a signal from a 12 volt source, it'll allow switches one and two to work. So if you turn on switches one or two with your switch panel, those switches will not work until it sees 12 volts into that terminal. You could also attach it to one of our terminal outputs on the Bantam itself. And if you activate one of those switches, it'll allow switches one and two to work. This is a great lockout feature for lockers and uh, traction control devices that you don't want to accidentally turn on. There are eight positions on the terminal block that correspond with all the outputs on the Bantam. Switches one through eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight can all be controlled with these corresponding input terminal blocks. By attaching a conductor to one of the terminal blocks, such as number one, you could use this now to activate circuit number one with an external device such as a remote switch, high beams, um, backup lights, dome lights, anything that could read a signal of 3.3 to 28 volts inputs. That will allow you to control those outputs using that external switch or device. The eight positions on the terminal block allow you to control the inputs with a negative or a positive input. By repositioning the jumper from the positive or the negative two jumpers, you can switch between positive and negative inputs. It could only be one or the other. In this example, we're moving over to the positive inputs. Now, if you connect a source to these positive inputs now, you'd have to connect it to a positive signal, such as your dome lights or high beams. If you want to switch it back over to a negative input, you just move it over to the other two jumpers. This will allow you to control it with a negative signal.
The Bantam has six dip switches located between the two battery studs. Each of the switches has their own particular function. Dip switch number one, two, three, and four should be in the off position. And five and six should both be in the on position from the factory. Dip switch number one has multiple functions to it. Turning it on and back off puts it in parry mode for 90 seconds when pairing with the phone. Turning dip switch number one turns on the status lights and also keeps it in the keep alive mode. Dip switch number two is used for toggling between 12 and 24 volt systems. Dip switches three and four are used for ignition and safety lockout and these only pertain to circuits number one and number two. If you wanted to use those features you would turn on those dip switches to deactivate switches one and two and you would have to use the ignition input to liven up those two circuits. Dip switches number five and six are used for source select. You could identify each of the bantams with their own individual numbers from one through four. This is in case you are using multiple bantams being controlled by one controller.